Hi all, welcome to the new video. Today I am here to talk about the regulation of respiration, mainly the neural regulation of respiration. So how do you classify regulation of respiration? The regulation of respiration can be either neural or chemical. So one is neural, it is actually in the brain areas. The second one is the chemical regulation. So what's the difference between these two types of regulation? The neural regulation, it is actually in the brain areas, mainly the pons and the medulla. The pons and the medulla are the brain areas which mediates the neural regulation of respiration. Whereas the chemical regulation of respiration is based on the changes in the oxygen, changes in the carbon dioxide and changes in the H plus ion. And it is mediated by a special type of receptors called as chemoreceptors. So right now I am going to talk about neural regulation of respiration. So neural regulation of respiration, as I told you, we have pons and medulla. There are two groups of neurons present in the pons and three groups of neurons you can say it, is, it has three groups some textbook wise it is two groups so basically there are three groups of neurons present in the medulla so what are the two groups of neurons present in the pons so we can uh, take into consideration as upper pons and lower pons the pons has upper pons and lower pons the upper pons mainly there is a center known as pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center is located in the upper pons whereas in the lower pons we have a center known as apneustic center so upper pons we have pneumotaxic center and lower pons we have apneustic center. Coming to the medulla, we have three group of neurons. The first one we can take into consideration is the a pacemaker cell. We consider to be uh, to have a thing known as pre bolzinger complex. Pre bolzinger complex is considered to be the pacemaker cells of the respiration. The pacemaker of the pacemaker to control the rhythm of Automatic breathing is considered to be the pre bolzinger complex. So when the question comes in as an MCQ, what is the pacemaker that controls the rhythm of breathing? It is nothing but pre bolzinger complex. So it is involuntary, it is the pacemaker cells of, uh, to control the rhythm of uh, respiration and it is the one which initiates the inspiration. So pre bolzinger complex was the first one which is present in the medulla. The second thing is dorsal respiratory group of neurons, DRG. And the third one is ventral respiratory group of neurons. So in the medulla we have pre bolzinger complex, dorsal respiratory group of neurons and ventral respiratory group of neurons. So coming one by one the function of each and everything. So first one in the pons we had pneumotaxic center in the upper pons and apneustic center in the lower pons. So what is the function of this pneumotaxic center? Pneumotaxic center limits the inspiration or inhibits the inspiration. Pneumotaxic center inhibits the inspiration or limits the inspiration by inhibiting the apneustic center. So it limits the inspiration by inhibiting the apneustic center. So the secondary function of uh, pneumotaxic center is that it increases the rate of breathing. It increases the respiratory rate. So pneumotaxic center limits the, limits the inspiration by inhibiting the apneustic center. It also increases the respiratory rate. Coming to the apneustic center. Apneustic center the main function of apneustic center is to prolong the inspiration. It prolongs the inspiration by activating the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. So apneustic center prolongs the inspiration and the second function of apneustic center is that it increases the depth of inspiration. It increases the depth of inspiration along with the prolonging the inspiration. So now coming to the next uh, uh, the group of neurons, For the medulla pre complex, it is the pacemaker cells of the uh, respiration to control the rhythm of respiration it is involuntary the second one is dorsal respiratory group of neurons so we have a mnemonic here dive d i v e dive dorsal respiratory group of neurons d for dorsal respiratory group of neurons i for inspiration v for ventral respiratory group of neurons e for expiration so dive is a mnemonic that you can take into consideration when you study about the medullary centers so d dorsal group of respiratory neurons is responsible for inspiration the ventral respiratory group of neurons is responsible for expiration. So dorsal respiratory group of neurons, it is activated by our apneustic center. So when it is get, getting activated, what does it happen? What does it result? It results in it, it is having something known as RAM signals, inspiratory RAM signals, RAM, RAM walk. So dorsal respiratory group of neurons have inspiratory RAM signals which results in the smooth uh, rise of the tidal volume. So it has a smooth rise of the volume, the tidal volume, which is supposed to be around 500 ml. So this particular thing, the dorsal respiratory group of neurons is the one which maintains the inspiration by getting activated by the atmospheric center 
and this results in the smooth rise of the tidal volume to around 500 ml. So B for I, the dorsal respiratory group of neurons, B for inspiration. Now what about ventral respiratory group of neurons? The ventral respiratory group of neurons, as you know, expiration is a passive process. It doesn't uh, require this particular thing for it to be controlled. But what is the role of ventral respiratory group of neurons? The ventral respiratory group of neurons comes into action when there is a forceful expiration. For example, you can take it exercise as an example. So during exercise, there is an extra respiratory drive taking place and this phenomenon is known as overdrive phenomenon. So this is about the functions of each and individual type of bone and nuclear centers. Now how to integrate this? You know all the functions of uh, certain uh, the centers what we call five centers and all two in the bones, three in the medulla. Now how to integrate it? So we have inspiration as well as expiration. So coming first from the inspiration, so we can uh, divide into two or three headings, like uh, three headings we can take it. So initiation of inspiration, how the inspiration is initiated, how it is maintained, how it is terminated and how it goes to the expiration. So first one, initiation of inspiration. How to initiate inspiration? As we earlier told, what are, what are the centers which initiate inspiration or what are the pacemakers says we need? It is the medullary centers which initiates inspiration. And it is the pre-board center complex which is the pacemaker responsible for the initiation of respiration. So just before going to this part, I will just tell about the points and medulla. Which center initiates respiration? It is the medullary centers. Medulla initiates respiration or inspiration you can say. And what regularizes the inspiration? It is the points. So medulla initiates inspiration whereas points regularizes the inspiration. That's about the medulla and pulmonary centers regarding the initiation and regularization of uh, respiration. So, first one as I told, initiation for inspiration, how does it take place? So, we have something known as pre bolsinger complex as a pacemaker cells to control the rhythm of breathing. So, what does it do? It is in the medulla. So, the signals from the medulla has to be carried out to the spinal cord via the C3, C4, C5. That is the phrenic nerves. We have phrenic nerve which is responsible for the signals to be carried from the medulla to the spinal cord. So, this results in the contraction of a muscle known as diaphragm. As we all know, diaphragm is a primary active muscle for inspiration. So what happens when there is contraction of diaphragm? It results in inspiration. So one applied aspect I can tell along with this is that what happens if this particular thing, if there is a uh, problem or if the pre in the complex is absent or some injury or a critical injury takes place there. For example, hanging or any direct injury to the circuit where the pre in the complex sends the signals to the spinal cord. So what happens if there is something like that? Okay, what happens? It is death is inevitable. Most probably there is a chances of death. There is a thing what happens here. Okay, there are many inc incidents directly uh, direct injury to the spinal cord led to death because of the uh, problem happened in this particular circuit where the impulses cannot be uh, transferred in, uh, uh, sent from the medulla to the spinal cord or pre complex is affected. So that can result in death. So one of the example you can say is online stress. So what is Ondine's curse actually? Ondine's curse is, a, is a, not a curse for us, it's a Greek mythology, a fictional character. Uh, I can just brief it what is it. The nymph Ondine was a, uh, the nymph Ondine was an immortal water spirit who became human after falling in love with a man. Okay. So uh, he uh, this particular nymph married the man and had a baby. That is one version. Other version of story is that when she was caught, her husband sleeping with another woman, she cursed him to remain awake in order to control his own breathing. So there was a loss of involuntary control but without loss of voluntary control. So what happens here actually? When there is a loss of involuntary, automatic control is lost. But voluntary control, how can you hold your breath? You cannot sleep. So what happens if you don't sleep? You can lead, it can lead to death. That's what the online curse, uh, uh, the incident of online curse. So this is an example of what happens here if the brain bones of the complex is affected. Okay, since online curse treatment you can consider it to be have, you can have a mechanical ventilation of the respiration as a treatment. But most probably, most of the time it leads to death. So that is one of the thing. So this initiation of inspiration, coming back to the initiation of inspiration, pre complex have to send signals uh, which is present in the medulla to the spinal cord via the C3, C4, C5. We have phrenic nerve and it results in the contraction of diaphragm resulting in initiation of inspiration. The second one is maintaining the inspiration, maintenance of inspiration. So we have acoustic center. It activates the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. We have an inspiratory ramp signals by the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. This signals results in a smooth rise of tidal volume to 500 ml. So this is the thing what happens, the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are activated which results in the maintenance of inspiration. 
to coming to the terminus of inspiration. Once the 500 ml volume, we have the inspiration as we all know the normal tidal volume is 500 ml. We have that now 500 ml. Now it has to be terminated. Now for getting terminated, what has to be done? The apneustic center has to be inhibited. So to the apneustic center to be inhibited, we know we have a two types of inhibition happening here. So one is pneumotaxic center, as, as I earlier told you, it limits the inspiration by inhibiting the apneustic center. So one is pneumotaxic center, we can take it as a central inhibition. The other one is peripheral inhibition. We have vagal efferents or the cradle nerve 10 present in our uh, the bones, which can inhibit the new, uh, apneustic center. So central inhibition by pneumotaxic center inhibiting the apneustic center, whereas a peripheral inhibition by the vagal efferents, the cradle nerve 10 can inhibit the apneustic center, thereby resulting in the termination of inspiration. So once the termination of inspiration is happened, then next is expiration. And I told you expiration is a passive process. The, the ventral respiratory group of neurons comes into action and there is forceful expiration, especially during exercise. An example is ex exercise. What happens in exercise? There is an expiratory, uh, extra respiratory drive, which is we call which uh, we call the phenomena as overdrive phenomena. So this is a integrated part of our neural regulation of respiration. Now with this, I can some of the lesions I have already told about an online skills. Now again, some of the lesions you can classify. So you can classify into three again: lesions below the medulla, lesion at the pondomedullary junction, and the lesions in the mid points with a vagus nerve cut, with a vagus with a cut of vagus nerve. So first one, lesion below the medulla. So what happens when there is lesion below the medulla? I told you that is inevitable. And even for example, hanging or a critical injury is what happened. Uh, many of the incidents happen like direct injury to the head when a, a ball can be hit. For example, Phil Hooks, an Australian cricketer, died uh, from by getting direct hit in the spinal cord injury. It is a spinal cord direct injury. What happened there is that uh, the the pre-bolgical complex is affected. Immediately, the uh, it was he was called, collapsed there. Okay. So, online space is one of the example you can give in lesions below the medulla. Second one, lesions in the pondomedullary junction. What happens when there is a lesion in the pondomedullary junction? The, the inspiration is initiated. Of course, it is from the medulla. But the regularization doesn't take place. So there is an irregular respiration taking place in the lesion in the pondomedullary junction. Next one you can tell it is lesion at the mid points. Means with the vagus nerve cut. What happens when the points in the mid points the lesion is there? If the mid points have a lesion, what happens? The apneustic center is not inhibited. The apneustic center has to be inhibited to terminate the inspiration. So what happens here? The pneumotaxic center cannot inhibit the apneustic center. The vagus nerve is cut. The vagal afferences are not there to inhibit the apneustic center. It results in a condition known as apneusis or apneustic spasm. Prolonged inspiration can take place. Prolonged inspiration can result in a condition known as apneusis or apneustic spasm. So these are some of the applied aspects related to the neural regulation of respiration. So along with this, you can add the pulmonary reflexes also. The pulmonary reflex, we have something known as pulmonary reflexes. The pulmonary reflexes, we can have, we have around three or four reflexes. We can tell as three. First one is herring brewer reflex. The herring brewer reflex itself, we have inflation reflex as well as deflation reflex. The second one is head paranormal. Uh, second one is head paradoxical uh, reflex. The third one is J reflex. The herring brewer reflex, uh, like example, uh, when, uh, when we have an over stretching of the lung, obviously we have a stretching of the lung, like uh, the peripheral inhibition to takes place, earlier as I told you the vagal afferents inhibits the apneusic center, there actually what is happening here, we have a stretching normally when we have a stretch in the lungs, like tidal volume is 500 ml, the vagal afferents it gets activated and it inhibits the, uh, the apneusic center. So here when this over stretching means up to 3 times the tidal volume can be increased. If it is 500 ml, it can be increased up to 1500 ml. If it is 400, it can be increased up to 1200 ml. Depends on the weight of the person. Again, it is around 6 to 8 kilogram per body weight uh, per kg. Depends on the kg, the dead volume can vary. Okay. So here, when there is over stretching, there is hyperinflation of the lung, it can result in lung injury. So to prevent this, we have a reflex known as herring brewer inflation reflex. What does it do? It reduces the uh, inspiration and it expiration commences. The prolonged inspiration can be controlled by this particular reflex known as herring brewer inflation reflex and the expiration commences there. Similarly, what happens when there is prolonged expiration? The prolonged expiration can result in lung collapse. So to prevent lung collapse, we have something known as herring brewer deflation reflex. So it reduces the expiration and it increases the inspiration. So that is one reflex. Second reflex is head's paradoxical reflex. 
as a newborn the first breath what we take after the introductory life every newborn everyone we all have done that so we have had prolonged inspiration taking place so what is until when until the air the we have the lungs have fluid soon after the birth the fluid will be there the amniotic fluid all those things fluid will be there the fluid has to be replaced by air so till that we have prolonged inspiration taking place so this particular thing is known as heads paradoxical reflex so the fluid replaces with the air in the lungs we till that we have prolonged inspiration so that it is actually the opposite of our herring brewer inflation reflex the prolonged inspiration is no control it is until the uh, fluid in the lung is replaced by the air it goes on so that's the heads paradoxical reflex last one is j reflex when you have a pulmonary edema a condition known as pulmonary edema the fluid from the pulmonary capillaries comes out and there is a something as j receptors adjacent to the capillaries so this gets activated the immediate response what happens first is apnea following apnea we have breathlessness we have hypotension we have bradycardia so this happens in pulmonary edema there is known as j reflex texta j4 texta adjacent to the capillaries when the fluid comes out of the capillaries there is activation of the j receptors and the reflexes the things what we see is apnea breathlessness hypotension bradycardia and this j receptors the j reflex was discovered by our indian scientist as pindal from aims so it's an a great as achievement from our come from our country india as pindal was a scientist who discovered the j reflex the j receptors so this is about our neural regulation of respiration again again a continuation of this is there periodic breathing also comes with this actually it's a separate topic uh, the abnormal breathing pattern it also is a part of neural regulation but this is the main thing what i have told now is about the neural regulation of respiration so we have pondens centers and malleable centers and we learned about the integration of all these centers some of the lessons applied to these uh, centers etc so i hope this will be a helpful video it's a summarization actually i have to draw and explain it is more easy so what a uh, small time what i have got i have just refreshed uh, about the neural regulation of respiration i hope it will be helpful uh, thank you all thank you for supporting